Alrighty, boys. Alrighty, alrighty. So I'm gonna teach you how to 1v9 a game with Kane. Throughout the entire game, first things first, it requires a little bit of teamwork. Okay. So, first things first, you tell your mid laner, mid laner, mid laner, go award his raptors. In 20 to 30 secs. So, this will help me know where the enemy jung is, which is very, very, very important. Um, I'm probably going to be doing, let's see, what pathing do I want to do? I'm against, uh, I kind of want to path bot because I'm going blue king because they have three squishies that I can one shot all of them. They, they have a pretty squishy comp, so it seems like a good game for blue king. So, I'm probably going to do wolf start. Um, we're gonna see what Kindred's doing. If we get that early ward on his on her Raptors, that'll be sweet. Yeah, it's ward It's fine. What? 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 Hey, where's my ward? Where's my ward? Hey. Okay. Well. Well. Ask for a ward. Didn't get one. So we're just gonna have to go off our brain. It's fun. So, we're just going to path towards bot, obviously. If you're going blue king, you always, want, always, always, always want to path towards the, play, you know, wherever you're trying to get your format, that's where you go. So, range gives blue. Melees give red. I want blue, I go bot. Fighting their jung and fighting their bot. And here's a little, here's a little rule. If uh, Kindred starts topside, it usually means that they will be pathing. To the boss side so if she starts top it means she's going to be down here so the whole thing about this path thing is i'm there faster than her i'm healthier than her and i'll probably be able to do something spicy something's real spicy i think if more guys are q we could probably do something good looks like they're not playing really that aggro though oddly enough you'd expect them to right Okay, we need Morg to kind of... Yeah, so she used Flash super early on. Oh, I got the kill. Whoa. Lucky me, huh? Oh! I'd back off. Kindred's uh, over that way. Holy moly. That was a close one. That was so juicy. All right, I think I'm just gonna start off with a Warhammer. So here's pretty much my thought process and what I like to buy first. Well, if I could buy a Warhammer, I usually do because that's so much, you know, for a first reset, that's so much. It looks like Kindred actually went to my blue. But I got have a little bit of vision here. So she saw me bot side with no blue buff. So she was like, okay, I'm gonna go invade his top side. It's pretty smart. So I'm gonna go invade her bot side. I'm gonna get three of her camps. She only got either one or two of mine. I can't really tell if she did her raptors or whatnot. So either way, I'm pretty much going to get a trade back. Alright, so a bunch of orbs off my first gank. And they have no some spots. So to be behind their bot right here, I'm going to get some vision as well. Vision is super important. So I'm going to get a control ward right here. I'm going to take her wolves, put a ward there. Look for, Keep my eye on bot lane. So if they overextend like they are right now. Yeah, this is go time. Okay. Okay. I mean, Zaya's not really autoing when I'm trying to gank is the thing. That was super awkward. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's really... Oh, man. I should have just farmed the camps. I felt like that gank should have worked out, but... I don't know. I said just played it too well. Oh, well. Maybe I should have just went one for one with the Nami. Oh, professional strategy not to get flamed when you mess up a cane gank. Just say. Simple solution. A huge thing about cane that you'll learn is that, uh... One second. Um, I'm trying to think. A huge thing that you'll learn about cane is that it doesn't really matter how your first form goes. It's all about how you play your second form, realistically. Okay, so Kindred's top side is going to respawn and all that very soon. Mm -hmm. 
So if you have a bad early game, just be like, ah, well, let's just play better our second form. It's a good way not to tilt either. Like, it's very easy for me not to tilt. You just focus up and you're like, okay, I'm, I'll be good. So, the way that I knew that her top side was spawning, because if she started top side and she did them, and she obviously hasn't been around this area for that long, so. If she started top side, they're going to respawn in like, you know, 440 to 5 minutes. And, you know, it's a little bit past that. And I know she hasn't been around this area, so. Just makes logical sense, to be honest with you. I think she saw me. Okay. Yeah, I can only make a gank there if he, like, plays it well. Because I had to make sure that she eat in the that, that wall so I can stop her. Kindred has no camps right now, so she's probably just going to look to, like, gank or something. So it's worn. Beware of the ganks, my boy. Beware. Okay, let's look bot again. We're going to be level 6 after like two and a half camps? Depends. I think if my red and my Krugs would give me level 6 for sure. Kasten looks killable if he overstays mid. Kindred's right there. She's been prioritizing farming a lot more than anything else. It's good for the team, to be honest. Okay, let's just look and see if there's any vision. Alright, we got level 6. We should look for a bot play now. Oh, wait. Oh, she just got level 6 off that. So now we redirect our attention to the bot lane. Blue buff spawning too. Our support's roaming. Uh. Oh yeah. Try and gank this. Okay, this should be four. Perfect. See, the thing is, is that just because your team isn't really making good plays doesn't mean you give up. You just look for opportunities to carry. Because the thing is, usually when, especially when teams are like kind of ahead and they have like the, the snowballing going for them, like the free goal, the free kills, like the easy out plays. They'll play a little bit more stupid. And the thing is, you'll notice, I'm not really behind on gold on any of them. Kasten, Nami, no, none of them. I just got my form, so it's like, because their team has more gold, and because my team's been dying for free, my team's behind, but I'm not. And they got the shutdowns, so I can go clean up some shutdowns real quick. Like 600 gold from Nami, and then 450 from Kasten. A lot of XP as well, because, you know, they have level advantage. It's like, yeah. So there's a bunch of plays to be made very soon. Okay, that's sweet. There you go. So, that's another kill. This is what you always want to be thinking about. For 1v9 and for winning games, if your team is underperforming, just be like that consistent... Not just mentally, but like gameplay-wise. Consistent win con on your team. Wow, that guy gave me so much XP there. What the hell? Oh! Oh man, nice flash. Okay, I was hoping that she would go on me and I could just hop the wall. Okay, so she used flash. It's nice. I have my ult, so I can probably kill her right now if I wanted to. I kind of want to kill the Nami though. It's free gold. Oh, ward. So I'm 4 and 2. My team's. 
to that. Got a little bit caught out there, clearing that ward. Not very good. Should be careful. He's probably gonna go for this mark if he wants to help me out here. Okay, looks like she's not hopping the wall. Oh, she's around. She's like over that way. Okay, let me reset. I have a good amount of gold, so it's a lot of damage. I'm gonna look for a play on bot probably. Bot or mid. Until I get that first item power spike, I'm not really huge yet. Right now, I'm strong, but I I play off my ultimate, really. Because your ult does a lot of damage. Because a long, long time ago, they decided, hey, it would be a good idea. Let's just give Kane ult for blue an insane amount of, like, like, it's, 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 the numbers are really, really insane if you actually look at it. It's a, it's a really strong ult, especially with the mixture of Dark Harvest and all that. Trust me, it's a lot. This is warded. Um, I think putting a control ward right here would be good. Eh. Trading one for one for a shutdown ain't so hot, but... I mean, I got her flash too. It's type of types of plays like that where it's like, what do I consider more worth? A shutdown for me, but giving a shutdown to Kaisa. Like, who do you think does more with this, really? Who do you think does more with this? In your head, you should always be thinking yourself, to be honest. Alright, I think we just get the red here. If she's still there. I don't think she is. Oh, she is. At least I got my red. My ult's almost up soon. I can get another kill. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, that would have been a kill too. Man. It's a bummer. You know, I think I'd probably prefer it. For my team's kind of underperform here, just because it kind of shows you guys a little some. Um, I'm just trying to quickly analyze how I do anything here. Oh. I would say that's worth. But then again, I'm a little bit biased. So I like to save my KDA. Alright, well, I have my dust plate now. Oh man, this is such a hard 1v9 game. Jesus. Kindred's not exactly an easy matchup either because her ult counters you, but I would not want to play Red Cannon to Kindred ever. I pretty much never play. If I'm against Kindred, I always go blue pretty much. I'm going to see if she's doing the rift. There's a good chance she might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do always like odds. Just gonna try and. Yeah, I knew it. See, it's plays like that where usually you carry the game. Just be a consistent force on your team. Just. The, the rule of knowing how plays like that are going on, it's just like kind of like. Just read it. Just read the scenario. She's in the river. She just took Scuttle. Rift's on. No point in not checking. No point in not checking. It takes me like two seconds. 
If I check, I get a free kill in a rift. Sound good? All right, we're gonna get Mobies now because we have a lot of damage. We're really ahead, so we have the damage. We need to be able to be everywhere on the map because this is how you carry games, boys. This is it, this is it, this is the secret. When you get this lead, you're everywhere. Everywhere. You're making the plays. You, you, everything. Vision. Yours. Objectives. Yours. Enemy jug. Yours. Kill the enemy jung. Yours. She had ult, but see, she didn't know how to ult in time because she didn't sh think she'd die. I waited for Morgvine to hit to ult out. Oh, there's my ult. That's why I held on to it. Alright, now let's force the mid tower. Rift in the wall! Wait, don't cue me. Wait, that. That! Works. I forgot that. I forgot. I thought he didn't have CC. Uh, see, now I'm not even happy that I got that rift earlier. I'm not even happy that I got that rift earlier. Now I'm just, I kind of just disappointed myself to be honest with you. That's how you make some plays in team fights, boys. Now you're talking about plays, you're talking about moves, you're talking about how to win. Listen, the mindset's there. Always be thinking about your next move. Always be working hard. Always be putting in that effort, even when your team isn't. Because look at my team. Let me hold tab. But you know what the most important thing is? It's plays like that, man. I'm trying to teach you boys how to 1v9 this damn game. You want a 1v9? It's a mixture of brains, mechanics, macro, micro, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter. And knowing what to build, so let's see. Edge and I, huge item. Uh, get some more damage. What I want here, maybe Last Whisper. Maybe, I don't know if I'd want Mortal Reminder. Probably for the Kindred R and the Nami healing. Uh, that would be good. So, let's get the dragon now. Should look for this play. Always make sure you're making plays on vision. This is what Deathblade is great for, because then you know if it's you're sitting on a ward or not, you know. Oh. She just hopped the wall back. No, she went the other way. Nice. Okay, right, let's go get the cloud. Um, clouds win games. All right, let's see. What do I want to build here? You can go last whisper. Happy birthday, Am Shields. Let's get the blue buff. So we have 15 KP out of 17. If she tries to take that blue, I'm gonna lose my cool. Just checking, just checking. So she's playing more confident now. Blue buff is super important, so you can just spam your E and constantly look for plays. 
pigs. There's some vision here. Now that Baron's on the map, we can probably look to make a pig. And then if we make, like, enough pigs, we can set up Baron. And then we can bait it. And then we can make another pig. And then we get it. Pretty much the Baron play. Summed up. Okay. Make sure I'm not warded. And I can make a great engage. Why well, just keep casting 1k gold? That was not good. I thought I'd be able to one shot her, but she flashed. She flashed and then Kindred ulted. Oh, they might get Baron here if we all die. Nah, no, it's good. Okay. You just stall him. Just stall him. Just stall him. That's all you have to do. Just stall. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. Thank goodness we didn't lose the Baron. Alright. Well, Kai says no flash. Um, Kassin's the main threat, so I should ideally be looking to one-shot him. Sadly, he's gonna have Zanya. They outscale. We should end soon. Well, buddy, it's 17-18 kind of hard to outscale. I mean, end soon. I'm looking for pigs, but I mean, oh. Huh. I got a free flash. That's nice. My boy, Phoenix, six for three, so man. We're back to the same club. You've been good, buddy. Oh, yeah. That's not Let's good at fucking all. go number one now. Whoa! Wait, why the bot cuss? I didn't know it did that. Um. Thank God Camille didn't come and kill me. Holy, that was scary. Okay, this should be a pick right here. Looks like she's overstaying. I have a cloud, I have mobies, I have my E. Alright, watch. She's gonna finish crop and then she's gonna try and hop the wall. Oh no, she went the wrong way. She has ult though, so I'm gonna save my... All my stuff. There you go. We should look to make a Baron play right now while she's dead. I'm gonna get a stopwatch just because it will kind of help me out here. Huge. Nice. Got a kill trade. We're not looking for a pick. I don't know why Zaya's bought. This team is... It's very hard to not... Or it's very hard to like kind of 1v9 it if your team's not really listening to you. Because that's like a huge part of League. It's communication. So those are the type of games where it's very, very hard. Because you literally have to do it above and beyond. Oh, uh, well, you know. Sometimes it's just just be like that I suppose it really just be like that oh there's the beyond oh I didn't stop watching time looks like my team's popping it off though finally they're making money moves man if I stop watching time 
I got blasted by that Kaisa. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't she Oh, they both have PD. Oh. Uh, hello? Why did Zyra run off and Morg ran off? What? Huh? Good job. Oh, Jesus. My team is getting outplayed by the Baron. Yeesh. That's my fault though. If I stopwatched, we would have won that so hard. I tried to get my W and stopwatch, but I couldn't do both. I should have just stopwatched and held on to my W. That should be a pick. Never mind. See, the Kastin's really fed, but he's also really squishy. Like, people are always, scared, people are always scared of uh, Late Game Kastin, but Late Game Kastin's only OP as the Kastin player is. Oh, uh, almost got two for that. That would have been stellar. Okay, let me just kind of go in here. Okay, I think I hit Nami there too. Oh, nice. Oh, it's beautiful. Let me wait over the wall just to kill him. Oh, I think we did it, boys. See, if you make enough good plays, your team eventually will come through, usually. Because it's like, if you give them so many opportunities, they can only drop the ball so much. But, I mean, they came through really good. They did really well. Darius telling me to check PayPal. Everything's everything's great. This is how you pretty much carry a game. You have to go a little above and beyond, but I think we did pretty well. A couple mistakes, but, you know, there's always going to be mistakes. No such thing as a perfect late game. You could always uh, improve. 